Hello everyone, my name is Juan Manuel Catalan. Today I'm going to present my work in this presentation entitled Unsteady Aerodynamics in Bioinspired Problems. Uh, why are we interested in unsteadiness in bioinspired problems? Well, basically because we know that atmospheric flows are not laminar. We also know from nature that swimmers and flyers usually benefit from fluid bar interaction. And even that some trees take advantage of wind and turbulent gas in order to, in to disperse their seeds thanks to their suitable shapes. So we know for sure that nature is wise and we would actually like to improve the physics understanding that are behind. How do we do this? Well, basically we perform direct numerical simulations of the incompressible nebulous stokes equations, accounting for the fluid bar interactions uh, using the immersed boundary method proposed by Ullmann. Uh, we use then a fractional step method, low storage semi-implicit rule ejecut of three stages, central finite differences of second order, a stagger Cartesian grid for the Eulerian points, and Lagrangian grid for the body. In this framework, in the group, there have been like two main developments. First of them is Tucan, which was mainly developed by Manu, Dr. Manuel Moriche and Dr. Alejandro Gonzalo back in 2017 and 18. Uh, was it is an extensively validated parallel solver tested up to roughly 8,000 processors. Uh, it is Fortran based, uses MPI, IPRE for the iterative solvers, and HTF5 for the input output. On the other hand, we have been developing, Manuel Guerrero and myself, Tucan GPU, which is the GPU version of, of Tucan and is, has been actually validated already against it, and is Python based, uses CUDA, Numba, CUPY, and HTF5 as well. Uh, today we're going to focus on Tucan GPU, which we have developed to have de developed to have two branches. Uh, first of them is the one in which the three directions are periodic. Uh, basically, in here the linear systems are solved directly using Fourier, which are the Helmholtz problems for each intermediate velocity components and the Poisson problem for the pseudo pressure. And then we have uh, developed three different kind of GPU kernels, which are Eulerian, Lagrangian, and Fourier, depending, of course, on the quantity on the quantities we are computing. Uh, as for the validation against two cans, uh, against two can, basically uh, we have chosen the flow around a fixed and a moving sphere at Reynolds 200 as a validation case with initial condition one in the stringwise direction. And we show here some flow snapshots of stringwise velocity and absolute error between Tucan and Tucan GPU. And also a table in which we show basically the maximum absolute errors, which as you see are of the order of magnitude of 10 to the power of minus eight. Considering that our, uh, that our problem is of order one, uh, this means that we have been completely validated. Has to be remarked as well that this branch is very useful and suitable for cardiovascular flows and that we have already run several simulations using the GPU code. On the other hand, uh, the second branch has two directions that are periodic and one that is non-periodic. Okay, The linear systems, again, are solved using Fourier, but in order to impose the boundary conditions of the non-periodic direction, we need to discretize the J and K Fourier modes using finite differences along the X direction. This is what we call pencils. Okay? Uh, in order to account for the pencils computation, uh, we introduce a new kind of GPU kernel, which we have called Eulerian Slice. And finally, uh, for what regards the uh, validation case, we have chosen the very same one as before, the flow around a fixed and a moving sphere, Reynolds 200, same initial condition, and with the only difference that now we are uh, considering Dirichlet boundary condition for the inlet uh, in the velocities and advective boundary condition for the outlet. And in the case of the pressure and the pseudo pressure, we are choosing uh, homogeneous Neumann boundary condition. If we focus now on the snapshots on, on, on top and the table at the bottom, basically uh, we are able to see that the validation uh, is again performed uh, reaching uh, absolute errors at that of the order of 10 to the power of minus 8 after again 140 physical time units, which means that we have also been already validated. Talking a little bit about performance, um, basically we have quantified it in, in the validation case that we have just shown and uh, whose size is roughly 4 million points. Okay. Uh, in order to quantify it properly, we have actually uh, measured the, the simulation time of both the CPU and the GPU codes. 
and uh, we have identified that for this problem Tucan GPU is roughly 25 times faster than Tucan this last one with 96 processors which is as, as you see a huge uh, increase in performance we are uh, interested, uh, uh, however, or as well, uh, into studying perturbed flows, right? And for that, we have uh, tackled two different approaches. First of them is STIF, that stands for Synthetic Turbulence Inflow Generator, and basically consists of adding an additional source term into the navier stokes equation, following the work of Smith and Breuer, and that depends on the internal scale of the perturbations that we want to input, the intensity, the time scale by Taylor hypothesis, because these perturbations are being convected downstream, the stringwise location, the, the and the fluctuation velocity, most, most importantly, which is computed uh, using digital filters based on the work of Klein and Kempf, and basically end up, ends up uh, being a self-correlated signal. The other approach we have tackled is basically uh, generating turbulence induced by a passive grid, which in our method is basically represented using Lagrangian points. So the applications we are going to cover today are free stream turbulence generation at low Reynolds number, a validation case sort of, which is the motion of a spherical particle setting, settling in the, in the presence of ambient flow perturbations, and at last, unsteady aerodynamics in bio-inspired problems, which is our ultimate goal. Focusing on the first one, basically we show here uh, two different cases. At the left we have green, green induced turbulence and the right we have a synthetic turbulence case which we have tuned to have integral, initial integral scale equal to 0.15 and intensity equal to 35%. What we see at first sight is that the, the development length is very different um, in order to be able to compare them properly, we have gone to the literature and we have identified that there exists a, a concept which is called virtual origin that, uh, that accounts for this. And after comparing it for each of the cases, it allows us to properly compare everything here. Once we have uh, the virtual origin for each of the cases computed, we are able uh, to see some, not only some magnitudes of the decay as it is the turbulence intensity or the isotropy, but also some characteristic length scales as the integral, the Taylor one, Kolmogorov, and also the turbulent Reynolds number, and the spectrums and so on that we are not showing here. And basically what we have identified uh, after performing this study is that by accounting for the difference in the development length, we are able to state that both methods can be qualitatively and quantitatively very similar. Going for the second problem, which is the motion of the spherical particle setting in the presence of ambient flow perturbations, uh, we know that without perturbations, the, this problem is governed that, uh, by two non-dimensional parameters, which are the Galileo number and the density ratio. And we know also from the literature that if we set the density ratio to be equal to 1.5, there exists several particle motion regimes as we vary the Galileo number, which are steady vertical, steady oblique, oscillating oblique, and chaotic. Okay. In our study, we have focused on Galileo number roughly equal to 150, which is very close to the transition between steady vertical and steady oblique. And we have run several cases. Okay. In here, we show the animations for the four nominal cases in which we vary the, the integral scale and the intensity of the perturbations. Uh, of course, here can be easily seen how the size of the perturbation varies and also the intensity, but we haven't only focused on that, but also in our study we have also focused in a, uh, quantitatively in how the particle motion, lateral motion is, and how far uh, how close we are from the steady vertical, steady oblique, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, finally, uh, going for unsteady aerodynamics in bio inspired problems, first of all, we have focus on the flow around a rotating winged seat, for which we have, uh, let's say, modeled the shape uh, in a simplified way using an oblate spheroid for the nut and uh, four ellipses that are tangent for the wing. We also show here some nice animation uh, showing the, the shedding of the isosurfaces as the winged seat rotates for a simulation that has been done in the GPU code already at Reynolds 200. And in spite of the fact that I would like to analyze these results more in detail, since we don't have time, I am just going to comment that our research is now 
going towards investigating if it is possible to design a micro scale rotor based on the aerodynamics of a winged ship. Okay. Finally, we have been tackling the problem of turbulent flow around flapping wings, and for that we have run several simulations, but in here we show two of them for Reynolds 1000, and basically on top we, are, we see a flapping airfoil, right, which, is, which has an imposed heaving and pitching motion, and is subject to some turbulence that is being generated by this passive grid that we introduced before, right? On the lower part, however, we have the very same case, but with uh, but subject to a laminar flow, and we're able to see qualitatively the differences uh, in the braking on, 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 the, on the vortices that are being shared, um, basically. Um, what we would like to assess further is what is the effect of the turbulence on the aerodynamic performance of these wings, actually. So in, in this slide, basically, I leave here some of my contributions and research activity. Uh, this is where my presentation concludes. Um, from here on, I would like uh, to thank you very much for listening. And I'd be happy to answer any question that you have. Thank you.